to the Beyond BD podcast. I am your standing host, James Travis. I'm here with the owner and CEO of 3D Lash and Brow Salon and Academy, Amy Legister. Welcome to the show, Amy. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, actually, James, side note, he was the first person to ever get me on a podcast, and that was like almost eight years ago. That was when I was just upstairs, just doing lashes and brows by myself. So thank you for being my host today. That's awesome. So we're gonna set, we're gonna start right at the beginning. Okay. For those in the audience who don't know your story, how did you begin uh, this uh, journey? Oh, yes. So I actually started off as a dental hygienist. I think several people know that, but yes, I started off as a dental hygienist. I did that for ten years. And um, I love dental hygiene, but I always knew that I wanted to be my own boss at some point. I just didn't know what that looked like. So the dentist that I worked for, she was the bomb. If you didn't have dental insurance, but you could do like lashes or hair or color cut facials, whatever you could do, you could work off your dental balance by offering that to her and the staff. And so she spoiled us as a staff and let us take advantage of that. And so. I discovered lash extensions and I had no idea how much lashes were going to change my life. Um, I didn't know how powerful they were to make me look and feel good and then once I realized that not only could I help others look and feel good and have a business, I was like that's a no brainer for me. So that's when I got my lash license and I started doing lash extensions. Okay, so you say you started doing lash extensions. Were you, did you just like quit your job cold turkey or did you, oh, you no, know, what happened now? Absolutely not, but I was very determined. I was like, I will be done with dental hygiene by March 1st. And that was six months. Okay. So I had a six month goal time frame. I was like, okay. And so every day I was hustling. I was letting everybody know I did lash extensions. I was seeing clients, you know, after dental hygiene, I was working nine to five, seeing clients from five to nine. And then on Saturdays, and then eventually my clientele got busy and booked enough that where I could just let go of dental hygiene. Uh -huh. And so I said, husband, honey, it's time. I did it. Is it okay if I quit dental hygiene? And so he saw the work that I had been putting in. I was like, yep, go for it. Oh my God. So you basically worked like pretty much all hours of the day. So five to nine, um, yeah, five to nine, and then the, the other nine, 9 p.m. So basically from sunup to sunset, you were working, you know, for six months straight. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> on my lunch break, if somebody was like, hey, can you do my lashes? I'm like, sure, come sit in this dental chair. I mean, don't do that. If you're in a dental office, do not see clients at your job. But a lot of the staff, you know, they wanted their lashes done on the lunch break, so I would do their lashes too. And yeah. Gotcha. So you say you went and got your lash license. Um, where'd you get that from? I went to a local school in Carrollton. It's a very small school. Um, they offered the 320 specialty lash license program. And so I'm very glad because Texas is the only state where they offer a license in just lash extensions. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I, it took me a while to do it because I was also working full time. Right, right. Um, I was also a mom, I had um, a little girl at the time. And yeah, so. So you balance it all. You, you know, work, <laughs> your own business, being a mom. I would like to say I attempted to balance everything. Um, there's no true balancing act. So, you know, if somebody says they have it all together, don't believe them. Yeah, no but does. you do have to, you know, uh, make sacrifices and you do have to, you know, figure out what is your priority when you are establishing your business. Gotcha. So, oh, that's really important. So speaking of priority, like, um, what were some of your beginning priorities when it became, when it became, you know, clear that, hey, it's time to transition from having my full-time career into this new and an unknown business for yourself? Priorities was my schedule because the reason why I wanted to become a lash artist, the number one reason why is because I wanted to be creating my own schedule and be able to take my daughter, um, she was, I think, maybe eight or nine at the time, to all her games go meet the teacher, breakfast. I wanted to be the class mom. So with being a lash artist, I was able to create that schedule and block off my time so that I could spend more time with my family. So that was the ultimate goal. <laughs> That's awesome. So you pretty much, you know, you did all this work, um, you know, separating yourself from your nine to five job to uh, ultimately for your family. 
Um, I know in your early days, you, um, you know, you had to pick up and learn like new roles. How did, how did using those, learning those new skills translate into having more time for the uh, people that you love? Well, um, once, that's a great question, mm -hmm. once I like hone my skills, so one thing I want to say is when you're in school, and now that I have a school, I have students that, you know, I say use those 320 hours to become the bomb. Like, don't think, oh, I'm in school, and then when I get out, I can really focus at home. Like, use these 320 hours, practice as much as you can, so that way when you do graduate, you can start making that money. So once I, gra I so that 320 hours, I started, I was lashing the whole time. Like, I was never just sitting around. I was asking all my friends and family to come see me, and then that helped build my clientele as well. So once I finished school and I took more classes, invested more in myself, I was more confident enough to charge more and more. So every time I invest in myself, you should raise your price. Okay, so that's what it was. And so once I was able to charge, you know, the certain amount that I wanted for those full sets, I could block off more time. So you don't want to be doing a whole bunch of lashes and not be making the money that you're supposed to be. Um, just to be having a booked schedule because then you're going to be overworking yourself and killing yourself and a lot of people when they graduate they want to start you know with $50 lash sets don't do that use your school use your 320 hours your 750 hours that whatever how long your program is to be as good as you can during that time um, and it will pay off I hope that answered your question yes <laughs> um, I learned a lot right there um, you said about you know 320 hours 750 hours I had no idea that um, not all of them were spent like not every minute of them were spent like you know honing your craft improving yourself so it's really about the effort that you put into those hours and not just the hours in themselves Ex yes you could <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly like just because you're a student does not mean you cannot become good now you're not gonna learn everything in school mm -hmm. but take advantage of your time you know time is money so even like um, Laced by Lonnie, uh, Lonnie Stoker, one of the things we have in common, she's an esthetician that speaks at our school sometimes, is when she was in school, she was taking other classes. They were like, why don't you wait until you graduate and then take, no, like if you're in school now and you see the artist that you really admire and you want to take her lash mapping class, go ahead and do it now. Like, don't just, and that, the, investing in yourself is the best thing you can do. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's amazing. Um, your um, last school, its name has grown a lot since you started. It's, you know, went from 3D Lash and Brow and now it's Salon and Academy. You've added a lot of, you've added a lot of ands to your business. Um, what was the inspiration behind, like, you know, picking up all those new skills? Well, um, as a lash artist, uh, I was just doing lashes and my clients, they really kind of pushed me to learn more services. Oh. So. Once you can do lashes, they're going to ask you to do their brows. Uh -huh. And so my clients were like, can you do microblading? Can you do this? And so once I learned brows, they're like, well, can you do eyeliner? Can you do permanent lipstick? And so I kept adding all these services because my clients wanted it. And I also fell in love with those services as well. And that's why, you know, one of the reasons why in my school we include so much is because I want my students to graduate with just more than just the basics. So even our specialty lash license program, um, they learn lash extensions, but they also will be certified in threading and henna brow. Because again, your clients are going to say, ooh, you can do my lashes and my brows. They're not going to go anywhere else. So. Oh man, so you really uh, provide that complete, well-rounded experience for your students. What made you transition from, you know, just like wanting to be the boss of like um, a salon, not an academy, but just a salon, but what made you add the academy? Well, I was already like teaching certification classes. Many people started asking me, can you teach me lashes or permanent makeup? And so I was. But in Texas, in order to legally perform lash extensions, you have to be licensed. So there's a lot of artists out there that will have, you know, one or two day certification classes. And some students may not realize that this one or two day class doesn't allow you to legally do this. So I wanted to have a school that was flexible and affordable um, that people could go to and get their license. That's awesome. So tell me um, about the flexibility and affordability because of course, you know, you've got to be good if other people are coming to you and, tell, and asking you, hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? I want to learn from you. I mean, number one, that's a huge opportunity and it's awesome that you took advantage of that. But um, how, what made you uh, structure the school in a way 
that all your students could learn basically at their own pace? That is, I'm still working that out. Okay. <laughs> um, again, like I said, I wanted to have flexibility and affordability. Um, so we had to figure out a way where students could create their own schedules, but still be able to get the information that they needed in order to succeed. And so we've, we're finding that mix um, and it's working out because again, my school was created for the working adult. Uh -huh. Because for me, there was no way I could go to school nine to five every Monday through Friday when I had I had to work full time. Right. I had kids, my husband, so I wanted students to be able to create their own schedules. So, your school is basically the solution to the problem that you had at the beginning of your journey. You yes. started off working. You know, you were working basically from nine to five, being a mom after that, and then. You know, you started your own business like, um, well, you started by getting a license on the side. Um, so you basically just, you know, created the solution for you. I mean, it's surprising that others haven't done that. Well, uh, I think there are, there are other schools um, and they're doing great jobs as well. Um, you know, we've been in a school for almost four years now. So, you know, having to pivot from where we were through COVID, um, it's been a journey, and so now that we're offering online learning, you know, we're having to kind of navigate that as well. Gotcha. So speaking of pivoting, what made you, um, how many times have you had to pivot as far as, <laughs> as far as like in your business? Well, that's the thing about business. You never stop pivoting. Mm -hmm. If you do stop pivoting, then you're going to close. Right. So you always have to be thinking about something innovating, marketing, all of that to stay in business. Um, I would say the biggest pivot, I can't count how many times, but the biggest pivot is probably number one, learning that I can't do everything by myself. Uh -huh. So having a really good team um, is key to having a successful business for, for any area. Um, for me, having good instructors, having an excellent director, assistant directors, you know, enrollment coordinators, like from the moment people call and answer the phone, you know, are you greeted with a happy person? Things like that help to keep you in business and to keep pivoting um, but the biggest pivot was was COVID-19 so just making sure that students could still learn mm -hmm. while they were trapped at home right um, online and still provide good education and so even though um, we're out of quarantine we're still keeping that um, idea of being able to learn from the comfort of your home but still be able to go out and be successful gotcha um, you started off by saying that, you know, your biggest pivot was um, building a team. How did, first of all, how did you um, decide, you know, it was time to hire people? By the time I decided to hire people, it was too late. Oh, okay. <laughs> Meaning, when you first start a business or even a school, any business, sometimes you're, you know, you're the janitor, you're the financial aid, you're a teacher, you're wearing all these hats you wear many hats yes and when you wear so many hats things fall out of place so once i realized i can't do everything by myself i need support then that's when things started to change and get better um so what was your first hire who was your first hire my very very first hire was actually when i was just upstairs uh -huh. um doing lashes and brows was katie katie okay um her instagram is i think Camp Beauty, Camp, Camp Beauty. Beauty. Okay. She's amazing. She was my first. I went to Ogle and I spoke um, at a beauty college, and I was just like, "Hey, you know, I'm getting busy. I need a lash artist." And she raised her hand and she was like, "Me." So also for those who go to my school, we have guest speakers. Uh, make sure you guys network to those guest speakers because you never know when a job opportunity or a connection. So y'all make sure y'all say hi to the guest speakers when they come to the school. Side note. But yes, so Katie was my very first employee, and she was amazing. She was, you know ambitious she was you know she came and um, I taught her microblading and you know volume she already had a lot of skills but she was hungry mm -hmm. um, and she was even if she was afraid she could she didn't share it with me <laughs> so I'm like here's your schedule this is what you're doing today and she knocked it out the park so yeah she, she was my so she kind of spoiled me uh -huh. with hiring employees <laughs> and so um, yeah she was awesome she was my very first hire and from, because I was able to hire her, mm -hmm. everything else grew. Like I wasn't so much the person doing all the lashing right. and all the brows that I could concentrate on other ventures in my business. So you basically replaced yourself with Katie. Yeah. 
And she would say the same because I ended up going on maternity leave and she held it down. Uh -huh. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So, I mean, that's They still ask for Katie. Katie does not work for me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, Katie's still doing lashes? No, she's, she's in Denison. Gotcha. Well, that's the power of um, hiring help. Uh, just being able to, you know, make your business grow. So I'm assuming that you, um, for the next, for the next few hats that you decided to put on, you hired other people to, you know, like take over those hats. And of course, like you said, Katie was an awesome employee who uh, basically spoiled you. <laughs> but <laughs> you realize that um, Katie could do a better job at doing, um, you know, lashes that you could um, doing lashes and everything else because Katie, you know, was able to focus. So the more people that you hired, the more you were able to focus on other parts of the business and eventually grow, right? Absolutely, because when you're a lash artist, and I tell everybody now, like, don't be afraid, even starting out early, to hire a front desk or an assistant, because when you're lashing, who's answering your DMs or who's answering your phone calls to get more clients mm -hmm. in? Um, you might have an opening, and because you didn't respond to that client soon enough, now you have an empty spot. So don't be afraid to hire because that investment will come back to you. Your husband, Nick, tells me that part of what inspired you to create this business is reality TV. Can you tell me the story behind that? <laughs> yes, I love reality TV. Well, beauty reality TV. Okay. But Jersey Licious. Okay. It was a show about a beauty salon and they had the most interesting characters, um, lots of drama, and they were super glam, like glam to the tips, top. So that inspired me. Um, there was a particular artist on the show called Olivia, and okay. she was just always hungry. She was always learning. She always had creative ideas. She just made her work look fun uh -huh. as a makeup artist. And so that's how actually I started. I started with makeup first. I, I, that show inspired me. I was uh -huh. like, wow, you can have a good career by just doing you know, makeup and beauty. And so I did makeup first. I did makeup weddings. Um, we would go all over Dallas and do makeup. I did makeup for commercials. Um, I, was, I wasn't that good though at makeup. I realized that. So <laughs> once I got into lashes, I kind of let the makeup go. But yes, Jersey Licious did inspire me for y'all young people. You probably don't know that show, <laughs> but yes. That's honestly, it's very self-aware uh, to know that, hey, maybe um, uh, makeup wasn't my thing. But then, you know, you moved on into something that was your thing. You took that inspiration uh, from Olivia. <laughs> I feel like you've got to write her a big thank you because... I have, and she ignores me. No, but <laughs> oh. I'm sure she's busy on Instagram, of but course. yes, I should write her official letter. <laughs> <laughs> you said, um, you know, your inspiration... Um, behind your business was um, reality TV. What's inspired you, um, you know, from your takeoff point until now to like grow until what you become now? Well, now that, you know, I'm not wearing so many hats and I see that I'm creating not only um, more jobs for women, more opportunities, um, not only that, but education for women, um, just seeing them graduate and start their own businesses is inspiration for me. Um, my favorite movie is Hidden Figures. Uh -huh. um, for those who don't know, it's a movie about these three women in the 1950s, three black women, and they had to work so hard just to keep, just to be able to work. Yes. And so anytime that I'm feeling like I'm overwhelmed or I'm wanting to give up, I'm like, girl, bye. Like, you, you should be glad that you can eat, you have all this opportunity. So for us to have all this opportunity that we have today and not take advantage of it, it's crazy so that movie keeps me going and also for my kids you know just creating more opportunities for them um, really keeps me going that's amazing it's amazing that you also brought up the movie hidden figures I've seen it myself uh, I think the real tragedy behind like the movie was that they were the women worked so hard but if you notice like during the um, because of course they did math during the movie um, they were known as computers and if you know, like during the 1950s, they were ultimately going to be replaced with computers. Mm -hmm. What makes you irreplaceable? Ooh, that is a great question. And that's, the, that's what I love about that movie. They made themselves irreplaceable. Same. Yes, James, come on. Um, <clears throat> what makes us irreplaceable? <sighs> that's a good question. Um, basically, not giving up. Um, 
and staying innovative like I'm trying to think what do my students want to learn you know so making sure that we're offering the most education the most certifications not staying complacent that's what makes us irreplaceable and just understanding that working adults need an opportunity to get their education now we're not perfect by any means but we are trying our best to get to that point where you know students come and go with an excellent experience that's amazing final question um you mentioned networking um earlier mm -hmm. How did networking play a part in building your brand? Oh, um, networking has paved a, a really big way for 3D Lash and Brow. Um, again, every time you in, meet with somebody, you never know what that connection is. It should be genuine. Like, don't meet people and just be like, this is what I do, you know, but right. you never know how you can help them. It's not just about how they can help you, how you can help them. And sometimes helping somebody, they'll refer somebody to you. Um, a lot of business I've gotten or even students has been referrals just from connections that I've made so again the dentist that I worked for her being having the heart that she did had and allowing people to work off their balance um, for dental services networked a lot for her business and for her employees who were able to take advantage of that opportunity so yeah networking talking to people being being open to meeting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time, Amy. Thank you, James. Where can people find out more about you? Oh, yes, 3D Lash and Brow, um, Instagram, 3dlashandbrow.com for the school. And if you're interested in any mentorship program, one-on-one um, -on -one with me, if you're trying to build your business to the next level, um, aspirewithamy.com. Um, that's my new thing is now I'm mentoring more women one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Oh,